In our last Backtracks video, we visited the Sydney T3 Bankstown Suburban Rail Line during its last week and last day of operation on Sunday, the 29th of September, 2024. And we'll put a link to this video at the end of this one. But in this video, we visited the line the day after it closed on the Monday and later on that week to see what construction work had started and how passengers were adjusting to the new train replacement buses. Just quickly, for those who may not be up to speed, the T3 Bankstown line was serviced by Sydney Trains double-decker driver-operated trains, but it's now been closed for 12 months to be converted to a driverless metro line, which will then open as the third stage of Sydney's M1 metro line that currently runs from Talawong in the northwest of the city through the centre of the city to Sydney in the south. I'm Marty, and welcome to Backtracks. The reason I went there immediately after the line was closed is because I wanted to find out if the construction works were going to start right away, or would there be some sort of more casual approach to the conversion? I'm not an engineer or a builder or anything like that, but to be honest, I can't quite fully understand how it's going to take 12 months to convert this line, seeing many months of work at each of the 10 stations had already been completed, and a lot of the infrastructure, such as the railway lines and the buildings on platforms, etc., already exist. I first started at Marrickville and not much was happening there from what I could see. But when I arrived at Dulwich Hill, I was really pleased to see that there was quite a lot of action on the line on that Monday. It was a real hive of activity right from day one. With construction workers up and down the platform already starting to install the platform screen doors and mechanical gap fillers. Before we go any further west along the line, it's probably a good time to talk about these platform doors and gap fillers. What are they? Around the world, driverless metros are generally built with completely straight platforms. They are more efficient to construct and safer. And that's easy to do when you've got a brand new station like those built for the driverless MRT in Singapore, those already on the M1 line. But some of the Bankstown line stations were built nearly 130 years ago. And back then, a curved station was not a problem. And actually, generally more the norm. I believe that there was some thought to straightening the existing curved platforms, but instead they decided to leave them curved and then fill in the gaps caused by straight carriages and curved platforms with these mechanical gap fillers. Mind the gap. And a company called Hyundai MoveX won a tender to install 150 mechanical gap fillers, mainly at the most curvy parts of the platform. And that same company will also install the 360 platform screen doors along eight stations of the Bankstown line. So I continue to head west and look, not a lot was going on at some of these stations. But at all of them, what was good to see was how well organised the train replacement buses seemed to be operating. So let's chat about that for a moment. What I was impressed with during the visits was how many buses there were running and how frequently they were turning up. There are apparently 100 of these Southwest buses running. They are boarding very quickly because they are free and no one has to stop and tap on their Opal cards. The other impressive thing was how many there were and how helpful the staff were in managing passengers. At every station I visited, it all seemed pretty calm and casual, although I was not there in peak hour. And similar to each station I visited, it was a bit sad to see all of these stations boarded up and already looking a little bit dilapidated. And it's quite amazing to see how quickly these stations already feel unloved, with leaves and rubbish already starting to build up in the closed off areas, and how quiet and still they are when they're not full of people and when all electronic signs and movement, etc., are turned off. But just before we get to Bankstown, I guess we can also talk about how has the change from trains to buses gone. Well, Transport for New South Wales declared the first morning, that was the Monday morning, without the Bankstown to Sydney trains, a pretty good success. It was reported nearly 10,000 consumers took the bus on that first Monday morning. But they are bracing for the increased pressure on the system when school students return from their holidays in a couple of weeks' time. The other issue is that these bright pink buses do offer a more frequent but a slower journey. It normally takes about 25 minutes on the train, but some are reporting it's taking nearly 50 minutes on the bus. 
And as I said, not all the stations along the line when I visited seemed to have that much work going on, but there was a heap going on at Bankstown. The railway station itself was pretty quiet. It's not actually closed for the full 12 months because trains will continue to run westwards towards Lidcombe, but it is closed for at least the next couple of weeks. And I was here at the end of the first week, and this is where the most interesting things are happening. Firstly, I could see that they had truncated the overhead gantry on the line heading west to about three quarters along the station, just near where the station building is. And you can also see a guards indicator placed at the platform at that same point. It looks like that's going to be the end of the line. And from what I understand, instead of using the regular eight car sets, the new Bankstown to Lidcombe line will only use four car sets to run the shuttle which certainly looks like it will be the case because the station is going to be considerably shorter once it reopens. The other big development is that they've already started demolishing the eastern end of the railway station. And this is where the new eastern entry to the railway station will be built, separated by a pedestrian walkway linking the Appen Way to the north and Restwell Street to the south. And slightly to the east will be a new entrance that will provide access to the Sydney metro platforms. So there you have it, the first day and the first week after the T3 Bankstown line was closed. And I'll be honest, there's actually way more work going on in multiple places than I had expected. And also that the bus replacement service seems to be running as best it could. And fingers crossed, it's going to be less than 12 months before the M1 Metro line extends through to Bankstown. I'm Marty. Thanks for watching Backtracks. I have two channels. Uh, this one is mostly about trains and metros, and the other one is about trams and light rail. If you did enjoy this video on trains and metros, please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you next time when we look at the past, the present, and the future of public transport. Cheers.